Hi, Bindu. So Sam? I have the internet weather for this week. And uh, good news and bad news, it's kind of the same as last week. Um, so no major changes. Okay. Uh, but I did want to highlight a few things. So first off, this is our top 10 most pro ports. Um, so it seems like the ports this week are very similar to the ports from last week. So there's no major changes. So what I wanted to do instead is uh, one of the things I've been doing is kind of diving in a little bit deeper on each port that we usually don't talk about to see if there's any metadata that we can kind of um, weed out a little bit more of. Uh, so this week I picked port 22 TCP. Mm -hmm. Now this is a SSH port and so usually what happens with SSH is it's an encrypted channel and you don't really know um, what's happening there. Uh, but if you study things at, at your, um, like if you have a honeypot or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, you might be able to see what kinds of clients are connecting to you. So um, looking at the last 60 days of our honeypot data, I can see what client uh, is being uh, connected to or what type of client most of the times. So I have the same chart but sorted two different ways. This is the top 20 by uh, number of events like volume and the other one is by number of IP addresses. Um, and you could see, and I didn't realize this actually, there are so many different kinds of SSH clients. Mm. The metadata he showed showed me so many SSH clients that I was never aware. Like, you know, we all know Putty, right? But, you know, do we know all of these SSH clients that were connecting to it? Um, what can you do with this information? Well, actually, a lot of times when, let's say, a system becomes compromised, um, let's say, like, an IoT device might become compromised. Well, that IoT device might have a specific version of, like, libssh. Mm. Um, but then other variants of that might have like a more updated version. So using data like this, you can profile, you know, what types of devices are compromised mm. or if they're using the same uh, version or if it's an adversary. Mm. It's always nice to know who you're kind of dealing with. Are you dealing with, you know, just some script kitty or something more advanced? And by knowing the tools that they use, profiling their SSH clients, for example, you might be able to determine which situation you're dealing with. Uh, so the next uh, part of the internet weather is the top 10 most sources probing. Mm. And again, when we look at this here, uh, we notice there's not much change um, from last week. Everything is the same as usual. So um, what I decided to do is look at port uh, 445 TCP because we looked at it last week. Mm. And I want to see what happened in the last seven days on port 445. Why? Well, last week, uh, you could see when we looked at uh, the last 900 days of activity for this port, which is almost three years, uh, you could see how the activity had ramped up. This is mostly related to WannaCry and then how the activity started to kind of slope down. Mm. And I wanted to see this week, is that still going down or was there something else that was going on? So you're going to have to make sure you don't blink here because oh, here we go. <laughs> Seven days doesn't make a big difference on this 900 day sh chart, but you could see um, the activity kind of flattened out. Oh, yeah. So it, it's not like things start kept going down. Um, the amount of scanning is kind of flattened out um, and that's normal. So uh, maybe next week it might go back up or it might continue going down. As you could see the pattern over the last almost three years and there's been definitely periods like this uh, where activity ramps up, stays the same, or goes down. Yeah, what is very unique about this, uh, you know, first the fact that we are able to show a trend over, you know, this many days, right? So, you know, for you to have that baseline to be able to show this. And it's also interesting to see that WannaCry was somewhere in the middle of 2017, I think. Yes. Right? It took, what, almost, you know, two and a half years for it to sort of slowly flatten out in terms of activity. Yes, exactly. That's a very good point. And actually, right here, I remember this weekend, because that was the weekend when everybody was reporting mm. on WannaCry and, you know, mentioning how it's a big deal and that there's this new vulnerability and yeah. this new malware. And if we were able to zoom in on that right now, you would see how sharply things yeah. went down. But ultimately, when out of the public eye, the, like the problem just kept yeah, escalating. escalating. Yeah. Um, okay, so now I actually wanted to talk a little bit about the story you talked about with the iLink P2P vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see 
what do we see on the network regarding that? So uh, I, I'm looking back in the last year mm. of all activity on this port, which is this is the port associated with that protocol. And you could see this is just activity to the um, UDP destination. Mm -hmm. um, so you could see earlier, like a year ago, there were about 10 million flows, uh, I think this is per hour, mm. uh, 10 million flows per hour for this port. And you could see these interesting step increases Good. here yeah. uh, and the activity going up actually tripling here, um, ultimately about 30 million uh, flow records mm. per hour. So it did seem like over the past year there had been a growth in the number of devices on the network uh, that utilize this protocol. One other thing that we can do is to kind of look for like scanning activity. And you could see there's this sharp uh, little, it looks like a stick here, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess if you zoomed in, it's more like a spike where there were many, many more things. And usually when that happens, we detect an alarm and we try to analyze it. So in that case, um, it was a well-known security researcher looking for this, um, I guess, trying to map out how many devices there are that are listening on this mm -hmm. port. I was actually able to go in and um, look at a sample of this activity. Mm. And it does look like quite a bit of devices are communicating with this. Uh, yeah, like maybe 10 to 15,000 mm. devices that I saw are communicating on this port, but only to about, you know, one to 200 IP addresses, mm. mainly in China, actually, in That's Asia. Scary. Uh, yes, but it makes sense because a lot of these devices so manufactured in China, and I think in the article they even mentioned yeah. how uh, they beacon back mm -hmm. to this Chinese manufacturer. Yeah. Um, but this is interesting because this is kind of makes the story a little more real with data yeah. of what's going on, uh, how much traffic there is, and these step increases are likely adoption of these types of technologies. Yeah. Perhaps you know more people started buying yeah. these types of devices and putting them on the network. Yeah, because you know what was interesting to me in this story too. You know, P2P vulnerabilities are not uncommon, right? But to see two million IoT devices, that's not a small number by any means. Right. And when we read statistics that say, hey, IoT is poised for growth, right? It's you know by 2022, you know you're going to see that everywhere. You start to think, oh, really? But you know, looking at you know this type of data. Data, right? it, it brings that statistic to real life. So. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it for the internet weather today. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Overall, quite positive so far. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yes. yes.